All right, all right. Guru here. Just wanted to share with everybody some new baits I've been doing this year for Steelhead. Um, pretty simple bait, easy to use. Um, I wanted something that definitely you couldn't find anymore. Because, <laughs> you know, uh, this year especially more than any other years, it's been a tough year on steelhead. Um, I've only caught a handful of fish. They've all been nice fish, but only a handful. It's just not a good run this year. So it seems like every year that we have that's not a good run, I seem to build all kinds of new shit just to try to give me something that's different than the rest of the crowd is fishing. So I've been buying these sequins and there's all different colors that you can buy. Here's some blues, purple, um, you can get different bags of them. Um, here's like these little flowers, these little stars of all different kinds. You know, you can go to your local uh, arts and crafts store and get sequins of all different kinds, more than you could possibly imagine that's out there. And um, it's just something that I think would work great for fishing and so far has, you know, I've caught a few fish on them. Um, so this is why I'm showing them to you guys. I'm going to show you a few other things that, uh, I've never shared and, um, that everybody can use, especially if you fish soft plastics, but this one's real simple. It's just a stack bead. Um, I put this style of sequin on there little bit bigger and these actually move they're pliable and um, they're pretty cool and then this is one of my 15 millimeter um, steelhead beads and then because it is a larger 15 I tend to go up in hook size so instead of a two this is a size one and um, just to you know give you a heads up bigger the bead you should go a little bigger on hook size even though you know, the buoyancy is a little better if you go with a, a smaller hook like this size 2 Gamagatsu. But, um, you know, it it's just going to help you with hookups going to a bigger hook on this larger presentation. And look how nice that sits back there. That fish comes up no matter what side they're coming from, coming from underneath. The hook's right back there in its mouth. Um Honestly, I've only hooked two fish and landed two fish with this bait, and but I've only been fishing it about a month. <laughs> so, again, it's just something that I wanted to share with everybody. And uh, both fish that I have caught have been hooked perfectly in the bottom of the mouth, kind of the bottom corner right by the tongue. So I'm not sure if the hook is this way and they're coming up and then coming down on it. Or they're hitting it from the side and turning. But they both of them have been hooked almost in the same spot on the mouth. And uh, it sets that hook back there nice with this stack bead in there. It really lends itself to an easy hook set, especially when the fish grabs it. They always hook themselves on the turn. Sometimes they just tow it to one side or the other. Um, sometimes they will come you know, on top of it and come down. Um, I've seen steelhead rise up behind a bait before, kind of go up and bump it, and then finally take it and turn. So, you know, you never can tell. But here's another one, um, that I was working on. And while I'm doing that, I want to show you guys something. I keep a, a larger threading needle, uh, in my pack with me when I need to thread just smaller soft plastics. And, you know, it's really easy. I don't know if I can get the line to go in there. It's really easy. Um, just having this threader there. Um, and again, I want to show you guys something else. Hopefully you can see that. When I pour my baits, here's some blue ones. You can see how they're clustered together. And so when you pull them apart like that, they hit, tend to have two flat edges. I like to take those flat edges and I put them to the side like that. 
and then push this down. There you go. You just thread it through. And one of these cheap little sewing needles, I buy like a pack of these fat ones, like five of them for like two bucks. They're, they cost nothing. And they're easy. You can keep these inside a small container. They're not like having a big, you know, six inch threader. Now, granted, you can't thread big stuff with this, but it's actually pretty easy. Like even a worm of that size to thread. Um, you know, even these longer ones. And it this is just a better than most of the threaders out there because it's not so long. It's a little fatter. It's not so pointy. It's easy to keep inside a small container if you want. So keep that in mind if you want to thread some soft plastics out there. But that's another one I've had good luck with, with this kind of peach. It's a real light orange peach that I go through. Um, the other thing you can do too, when I was talking about those flat sides, and I don't have my marker right here for some reason, but you can color those. And it almost looks like eyes. It's pretty cool. In fact, here, let me, uh, let me grab a pen real quick. Here we go. Grabbed a red marker. So I'll show you this. We'll color one of those sides so you can kind of see it on the red. That flat side. And again, if you want to keep a marker with you when you're on the bank, see that? Isn't that cool looking? And then you can flip that over. Color the other side. And I got I keep, you know, I keep a red marker, a green, of course, a black. I have a purple one. Sharpie makes every different kind of color you could possibly imagine. Let that dry for a second, and that stays on there. Excellent. But it looks like a little embryo inside that egg. There's a couple different companies that are putting these out, but they charge so much for soft plastics for steelhead. I encourage everybody to start pouring your own soft plastic eggs for steelhead. It is really easy. Anybody can do it, and you can make sweet-looking baits that normally you got to pay, like, you know, just like these 12 and a half millimeter. You know, I've been looking in the stores, and they charge you, you know, probably 10 bucks for 10 of these. They're like a buck a piece. When you could pour, you know, for a buck, you could probably pour 100 of these for a dollar's worth of plastisol. So... If you're not into pouring your own soft plastic baits for steelhead and for salmon, you should be. Um, for the bass guys out there, a lot of them are doing their own baits. And it gives you an advantage. All these extra little things that we do give, give any fisherman the advantage. And, you know, any fisherman can come up with a great idea. Um, you know, so get out there. Give it a shot. Give it a try. It's not all that hard to start doing. That's why I'm sharing it all with you guys here today. Um, the other thing I want to show you too, we'll just set that bait down. Here, I'll show you one I've been working on. And I know you won't see this. Um, so one of these, this is a dark green bait, uh, or excuse me, bait, dark green stack bead. And you can get stack beads online, all different kinds of colors. Um, I buy mine by the 500 count because I use so many. So, but stack bead. And then let me see if I have one of the smaller. Uh, I have one out. No, it was, um, it was a purple that I was doing with that green. Oh, here it is. No, let's see. Yep, there it is. This one, and I'll try to hold it in my hand so the camera can see it. It's kind of a light purple. It's really cool looking. So this with the green. And then um, we were doing that with a blue egg. And that's what I caught. That's the pattern that I caught the other fish on. Um, 
So again, take your needle, put the, uh, the line through it so it's doubled up. And I did just a couple short leaders just to make it easy. Hold your, your flat sides against your fingers just like that. You can look right in the middle. Boom, poke that through nice and easy. Pull it through, run that down. And that was the other color that uh, I used. And one of the things that you will see when you're going to buy soft plastics for salmon and steelhead is they all tend to be bright colors. You know, pinks, purples, stuff like that. Don't be afraid if you pour your own soft plastics to be using these yellows and blues. Yellow is another color that I thought for that pattern with the green, but I just haven't tried it yet. Um, yellow and black for salmon and steelhead are probably the two most underutilized colors that they are, especially black. Black for salmon and steelhead is just magical. And if you're not using it in your bag of tricks, you should be. Um, black is definitely a color, especially on bright days. Um, it contrasts better than any other color in the water. And what I mean by that is the fish can see that because of the light behind it. They see the shape of the bait, whatever it is, um, in black. It contrasts so well. Like I got a whole pile of black nickel blades in lines here. Um, I use black on everything. And nine times out of 10, when the fish are not biting, it's that oddball color that's gonna get you the strike that nobody else is getting. Um, and just remember that, black and yellow. Um, the other thing I wanna share with you while we're here is something I do with some flashaboo. And basically I like to thread the flashaboo into my worms. Um, and again, anybody can do this. It's not all that hard. Um, I actually will take like this one. <laughs> this one is part of the little tentacles from a hoochie. And I put it in there like little legs. And uh, it's kind of like playing Dr. Frankenstein. You're Frankensteining your baits. Um, anybody can do it. In fact, there is... Uh, Bass Tackle, it's a great company that has all kinds of um, everything you could imagine for for soft plastic baits. Lurecraft is another one that I would recommend. Um, they make some really good stuff for doing soft plastics. Lurecraft actually has a machine that you can buy that melts different soft plastics and you can actually melt them together, weld them. It's pretty cool. That's like the ultimate in Frankensteining. But um, getting back to what I was going at, the flashaboo in my soft plastic worms for steelhead and for salmon just gives it a, a just a whole nether dynamic to it. And you can add as many as you want. I typically add one, but for the sake of this video, I can show you how I do it. It's real easy. Um, let's see here. Put this bait back so we can set this out here. Um, actually, I need a little piece of line here. So we'll cut part of this little leader just so I can use this line like that. And we're gonna take our handy dandy threading needle that we have. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take both tag ends right through this needle. So both tag ends are coming out the needle and then you have a loop on one end. So all you wanna do, where is my flashaboo? It is, what did I do with it? It's here somewhere. <laughs> well, um, Oh, here, I can use this. Here's some of the, the smaller stuff. So what you can do, we're gonna take that out. Let's grab some of this here. 
See, this is some of the finer flashy boo. We're just gonna double that up like so. Just keep doubling it up so you kind of, you're just looping it essentially is all you're doing. Keeping it pretty simple. And of course I forgot my scissors, but that's okay, I'll show you how it's done. So once you get that just kind of looped up like that, I like to just set something on it to hold it down. We take our needle with the two tag ends and kind of get them even up before you do this. Here, let me use a worm that doesn't have anything on it. So all we're gonna do, kind of stretch those out to where you, you just need a little bit sticking out. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna push our needle through the worm like that. We're gonna pull that through. Once you pull it through, you can see you have the loop on that end. Tighten that loop up a little bit. Take your little thing of flashaboo. You're gonna stick it inside the loop. Then you're gonna take that loop, just like that, you can see that. We're gonna pull that through. Hold one end, so you're only pulling just a little bit at a time. You don't wanna pull the whole thing through. Yeah, I might have. Yeah, I didn't even it up enough. But if that happens, you can pull it out and then just pull it through like that. And there you go. Then you just wanna trim that up. Let me grab my scissors real fast. I forgot everything. Grab my scissors and, uh, oh, we're just gonna take that, we're gonna trim that up like that, like so. Trim that up. So you have this little flashaboo through your worm. And like I said, you can do as many as you want. I typically only do one. And the action on that is so amazing. That flashaboo inside that worm. Um, it's really, really cool. And you can pull through anything you want, really. I mean, like I said, I use the little tentacles from a hoochie. And, and pull them through. Like here, that one I did, just messing around with it. Pulling it through. Um, a lot of times, I'll... Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to take, and the 12 millimeter does a little better job here. Um, so I take a worm like this and I cut that much off of it. So you just have that dangle in there. So let me actually have another leader here tied up. So for the purposes of this, We'll just run this through and always leave a little bit of the tail when you're threading don't thread all the way back to the tail leave at least a good inch to an inch and a half um, the action's much better that way and then we're just going to take our little our needle here we're going to thread that through just like that oh yeah see that push that down don't get in a hurry here. Pull that through. Just like this. Oh, I forgot a bumper, but that's okay. Just trying to show you how to do this. Normally you wanna put a bumper right here between your hook and here, so it doesn't pull through. But I just wanted to show you this. This was a, a one of my soft plastics that I ran some of the flash booth through. And this little bait right here, um, I actually fished this under um, with a float. Um, not quite what I would call bobber dogging, 
but pretty close. I just use a heavy weight to keep it down near the bottom because this thing likes to ride up because it's very buoyant, everything. Um, I've actually drift fished these two. Um, they seem like they're a little big to drift fish, but man, oh man, just some vicious, angry strikes. But that little guy right there, so that is basically a standard, you know, paddle tail steelhead worm with a 12 and a half millimeter egg that I've pulled the, the flash boob through. And that is a money winner, absolutely money winner. Um, I actually do this for bass too, just with different colors. Um, and smallmouth absolutely love it. Um, it, it, I can't say enough about it. Um, the only difference is when I'm doing it for, um, the bass, I don't use an octopus hook. I use a, a, a wide gap, um, little thinner, but uh, bigger gap right here. Lens for better hook sets. If you want to try this for, for bass and, um, for bass, I essentially do it like a Carolina rig. Um, where you have this out and you have your weight and everything about right here, just standard Carolina rig style with a clacker, you know, works wonderfully. Um, but that's it. Just wanted to share a couple little soft plastic tips with you. If you really, really want to get into building your own soft plastics, um, check out Bass Tackle or Lure Craft, um, two companies I do business with. Got a lot of good molds, um, all of the stuff you need to get started in soft plastics. And it's easy to do. Anybody can do it. And I hope you get started on it. So hopefully that's going to give you guys a, a, a different uh, approach to things. Um, it is now the 2nd of February, 2021. Um, and we are going to go fishing soon. And I'm definitely going to take that bait along. So enjoy yourselves out there. See you on the water. Guru out.